Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to turn the focus a little bit over um, to the law-abiding citizens. Um, I'm going to try and make it a nonpartisan and make it more about the law-abiding citizens. Because I think, you know, we just got done with Mother's Day, and I, I think I have one of the best moms that's ever walked the face of the earth. So happy Mother's Day again, Mom. But I, took, I look back to all the lessons that my mom taught me was for every action, there's a reaction. And for if you do an action and that's a bad action, you got to pay the consequences, Lisa. So you can make your own decisions, but when your decisions or when your actions hurt someone else, then you have to pay the consequences. And there are some things mom can help you with and some things other, but she can't. But you have to be responsible and more importantly, accountable for your actions. And I, I hear her on my shoulder chirping in my ear constantly. So I think mom's done her, done her job. But let me just start. In May, as of May 9th of this year, total crime, I know you've heard the stats, but I think they bear repeating. Total crime up 27% in D.C. from the same time last year. Motor vehicle theft up 110%. Homicides up 12%. Sexual abuse is up 53%. And property, is up, property crime is up 30%. That's not a good position for the law-abiding citizens to be in. And I think we need to really take a good long look at why. And I think it goes back, and I hear my mom in my back, in, 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 on my shoulder, consequence to the action. What is the consequence to your action? Because if my curfew was at 10 o'clock and I come, came home at 10.05, there was a consequence to my action. And sometimes it was a little harsher than I thought, but I responded to that consequence. And the next time I came home at 9.50, I wasn't late. But despite a sharp increase in crime, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia declined to prosecute 67% of individuals arrested in D.C. in 2022. 67% of the people that committed an action didn't have a consequence to their action. I wonder what behavior that led to. I wonder if anyone can connect those dots. According to Police Chief Robert Conti, the average homicide suspect had been arrested 11 times prior that, to them committing the homicide. I wonder if we would have had a consequence to that action a little bit sooner if we would have had the same result. Right? My mom has zero um, time in law enforcement, but I think her concepts really make sense. So Mayor Bowser, do you think violent and repeat offenders should be kept in jail? I believe in consequences as well. Thank um, you. Con Congresswoman. <laughs> um, but I also believe uh, that it's complicated. And that life, is, but yes, life is it, complicated. Life and is life complicated. is complicated for the law abiding citizen Absolutely. too. And sometimes we, I'm sorry. I, I don't disagree. It's really quick. It, do you yes. believe that violent repeat, repeat, repeat offenders should be kept in jail? And if the answer is I don't know or it depends. I will say that I advanced a piece of legislation that addresses the issue that you're raising. So yes. For repeat violent, uh, for a person who has been convicted of a violent crime and is arrested for another violent crime, I am suggesting that we close what I see as a gap in our law. I agree with you, and but I think you're missing the, the point. And give the courts the ability to detain them while they await trial. So is that a yes? It's a yes in some cases. <laughs> yes, I think that this is. And there, I, I believe the firmly. This is what I believe firmly, Congresswoman, and we've been focused on taking guns off our street. We let, can let, have me, a, let me stop you because I don't want to get. I have another okay. question. Um, do you have any concerns that the average homicide um, suspect has been arrested 11 times prior to committing the murder, Mr. Graves? I mean that 11 times. Yes, we have concerns with anybody who's arrested. I, I do want to clarify that same study, which was talking about a point in time. Um, almost all of those people 
had been prosecuted for some of their conduct, 75 percent of them were under court supervision at some point in time in their lives, and 25 percent of them. But it didn't work, them, right? It didn't work. Yeah, 25 percent of them were under right. court supervision at the time of the offense. Right. Okay. So, can you explain to the committee why your office is declining it, it, to prosecute so many people? I mean, 67 yeah. percent. I'm already down. Thank you all for your time, right. and thank you again to my mom for talking about consequence, actions has co have consequences.